Oh. Hello everybody, welcome back to James Interviews. This time I like to ask James a common question. Namely, I hear many people saying they are almost done, almost finished with their self-inquiry. And it seems like to me those people are a little bit too quick with that conclusion. And I would like to know, James, can you tell us what are the three steps the three primary steps before we actually can say that we are finished, we are done with self-inquiry. Okay, that's, that's a really good question because you're, you're right. Uh, many people uh, speaking as jivas or as egos uh, think they're done when they aren't done. And they think that because they haven't gone through uh, the three stages of self-inquiry, they don't understand what those stages are, and they tend to skip. This is a big, big problem in in Western um, spirituality, is people don't want to wait, they don't want to do any work, they don't want to follow rules, they want to jump to the final end. Yeah. Huh? You see this all the time. In the Neo world, they just tell you, you are awareness. You just start with an ignorant person and they tell them you're awareness, and they don't lead them carefully from, through the steps from you're an ignorant, limited person, to you are limitless, non-dual consciousness. They don't supply the steps in between. And you can't skip. In self-inquiry, you cannot skip. It's not going to work if you do. So the first stage is, is called uh, shravana, and it means listening. And uh, to listen is very difficult. It's very difficult to listen because you have your own opinions and ideas. So when somebody's speaking, you're usually just relating to that person through your own fi the filter of your own ideas and opinions. Mm. You're not actually here what's being said, and you're putting up objections or suggestions, or you're trying to impress the person, or you're trying to prove that they're wrong or you're right, or some. You have some thoughts going on about it, but listening means that you have to suspend your point of view long enough to hear what's being said which means that you need to have you need to have faith in the teachings for this to work and you need to feel hopeless and helpless because only when you're really hopeless and helpless and you realize that your own personal approach to a freedom hasn't worked that you're ready to listen to the teachings mm. and then then the teacher explains the meaning of the teachings what they are who you are and who you aren't you need to know the difference between yourself, the subject, awareness, and the thoughts and feelings and objects in your mind, and between you and your ego, because your ego is just a thought in your mind. The ego is your experiencing entity, the person that you think you are. Then, once you've heard the teaching that you're awareness, the next stage is extremely important. You need to, be, to resolve all your questions or doubts about the teaching about your identity by carefully going through all of your thoughts and feelings and ideas about who you are and dismissing those, renouncing those in light of the knowledge of who you really are until you're a hundred percent convinced that you're awareness. Okay? You have to be a hundred percent, that's called manana, that's the next stage. So, so the first is listening. listening, yeah. And once we listen to the teaching without interfering with our own desires and fears. That's correct. Then comes the stage of manana, you know, uh, manana. manana, where Man you reason, where you, that's right. where you re analyze your desires yeah, and fears. Yeah, that's right. You analyze your desires and feelings and you keep those ideas that you have that are in harmony with what you've heard and you throw away or reject those ideas that you have that are not in harmony with what you've heard. So, until you're 100% convinced that you're the self. Mm. Now, if you're a highly qualified person and you've removed all your doubts about yourself, you get to enjoy the fruit of self-realization. Mm. The fruit of self-knowledge or self-realization is perfect satisfaction. You're perfectly satisfied. Mm. You you no longer feel that you're a doer. You've already 
understood that the person that you thought you were is not real and you enjoy that person as it is mm. without trying to change it and you enjoy yourself as it is because you know who you are. So you not only enjoy your ego as it is, you're not trying to fix it or change it and you understand yourself as you are. You obviously know that you can't fix or change yourself. So you're perfectly happy and perfectly satisfied. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's the next stage. But if... That's it? Uh, Even more? <laughs> well, if you don't, if you're not, don't enjoy perfect satisfaction, yeah. then you, you, you have to continue with your study of the scripture and your practice of yoga and meditation and discrimination oh, okay. Change your life. You have to get your lifestyle. You have to requalify, so to you say. You have to re. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to requalify because there's some deep subconscious uh, tendency or p pattern of mm -hmm. thinking, pattern of beliefs and opinions that hasn't been destroyed by the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Understand? If you're qualified, if you're clean inside, internally your mind's clear and you hear the knowledge that will destroy all of your ignorance and you will get perfect satisfaction yeah so so the third stage is called nididyasana and that's that's the spiritual work that you do to actualize who you are yeah. not just to realize who you are there are many realized people yeah. but there are very few self actualized people oh. because when people become self realized they think that's the end yeah well, that explains many people who are self-realized who still um, don't have completely control of not com not control but the jiva still reacts to that's right chaotic environments and uncomfortable situations yeah and to ideas and, and opinions and beliefs uh -huh. that is contrary to them yeah I mean I I found uh, in discussing with people in the Facebook forum that some people are incredibly attached to their beliefs and their opinions oh. and and even when I try to present or ask them to do inquiry on those beliefs and opinions they don't want to do it. No, they're too they're, attached. They're, they're too attached mm. and they think there's something wrong with me yeah. that I've got a personal uh, issue with them or some sort of problem with them or, or that it's just my ego or they don't want to surrender to me or something like that but it's not that it's just that they've convinced themselves that they know who they are when they're really not clear who they are because the clarity about who you are comes uh, with the clarity about of who you are comes complete non-attachment to your jiva's points of view yeah. you can easily surrender your jiva's points of view mm. so we're trying to get the jiva's point of view in harmony with the truth about who it really is yeah. Because the scripture says there's no actual difference between the jiva and the self, between yeah. the person and the self. There's no actual difference. There's an apparent difference. Maya. Maya. Maya creating an apparent difference. Yeah. But there's no actual difference. Yeah. That is good. Because okay. otherwise it would be <laughs> a hell of a ride. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's a very good question. That's a very important question. And we should post that on your, on the... Facebook forum. All right. Thanks again, James. You bet.